In the description below this video, there are links to most of the items used in many of my videos. They are there so you can locate them in case you are interested. Hi, my name's Jerry, and this is my twin troller. This boat now is just about five years old. I looked it up. This motor showed up at my house by UPS January 6th, 2015. It's early in January 2020. So I've now had it for five years. And I periodically do maintenance to this motor. I follow the manual. And that's what we're going to do today. I'm also going to do some maintenance to the trailer itself. And follow me. Let's go do this together. If you haven't done any kind of maintenance to yours, you can see the way how I do it anyway. And I try to follow the manual. So don't forget to subscribe or give me a thumbs up. Click on the bell, share with your friends, or leave comments and questions below. As I said, it's early January. 2020 and some of you are up north trying to chop a hole in the, in the lake so that you can launch your twin troller and when I tell you it's supposed to be 85 here today you're probably turning around and going what did that guy just say 85 today 57 for a high tomorrow we're in that time of the year where we can get really warm or really cool but if you're hearing noises, I have a fan on because it's a little bit warm. So bear with it. Now, what is the most important thing that you need to do this maintenance on this motor? This manual. That manual came with the twin troller Honda 2.3, at least mine. So if you bought a different motor, you'd have a different manual, but you still need the manual in order to know what to do. What kinds of things do you need? Well, besides the manual, you're going to need some hand tools, some sockets, a new spark plug. For the Honda 2.3, it is a NGK CR4HSB. You need some marine grease. I also use this, it's called Super Lube, and I'll explain where I use that. I use some rags, shop rags. I have some Valvoline high performance ADW90 gear oil. That's for the lower end of the motor. I use Castrol GTX SAE 10W30 motor oil. That I use for the engine oil of this. This is my pouring spout and I'll show you how that works. I have a grease gun. Some of you might have one that looks like this, or some of you might have one that looks like this. They both work. I just happen to own two. Paper towels. Probably going to need a bunch of these. This is a 13 gallon tall kitchen gar garbage can bag. I'll show you that. That will, that will keep your life much simpler. Here is a gas can. It's a particular style of gas can that I use, and I'll explain that. Here's my spare tire. If you don't have one, it's up to you, but I do. And I have a tool for getting it off of the uh, trailer if I had a flat. That's to undo the bolts. And I'll show you some maintenance that I do for that. These are called bearing buddies, and they lubricate the axle bearing that's pretty important, especially on a trailer that you're going to submerge this into the water with. Naturally, I have my spare fuel bottles, and I'll show you how I use those. So kind of let's get started. So I showed you this container, the larger one. It lets you have more room to make a mess and not get it all over, but this is kind of big for what I want to do. I take that plastic garbage bag, the 13 gallon tall kitchen bag one, and I take the smaller one, I put it inside here, 
and I kind of fold it down a little so that when we get done, all of my oil, grease, rags, anything I want to throw out, I just throw in the middle of that and I fold it over backwards, tie it closed, throw it in the garbage. That's a great tip. This is the manual. Page 46 shows you a number of uh, lubrication points on the motor as well as information about your spark plug. So let's do them one at a time. First we have to take off the cowling to the motor. You pull down the rubber strap, lift this up. On this side of it there are two little tabs They come out. Now this doesn't come all the way off. It's always connected unless you untie this. This is connected to here to the motor. <clears throat> Pulled it out just a little so I can lay it over there. I have a tiller extension but you may not. Now some of the places I want to get into are right inside here. There's a throttle arm in there that we need to lubricate but this is the fuel tank. It's a little bit in the way, so I'm going to kind of pull it out of the way. I'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket to take off this bolt and this bolt. I use these magnetic trays to keep my nuts and bolts and things like that in small parts in it so that I don't lose them. That's pretty handy. There's a fuel line connected to the bottom here so you can't go too far and I've got it full of fuel so I don't want to take it completely off and I just want to tip it over to one side so I can get in here. This arm right here is the throttle arm and you can see when I work the throttle this uh, moves back and forth. The grease I'm using is called Triple Guard. It happens to be an OMC product but it's a waterproof anti-corrosion uh, lubricant and it doesn't make any difference what brand it is. I've taken a tiny little bit and I'm smearing it all over this moving part here as well as a little bit on the wire that goes back and forth and then I'm gonna work it and I'm just kind of smearing it all over so that as I work it it will go back inside the sheath here and hopefully lubricate that too okay that's done this knuckle is where the tiller arm goes up and down. So they want you to lubricate this. I'm going to take my rag and clean off all the old grease and dirt that's from the last time and accumulated dirt since I used it last. This bolt uses a 12 millimeter. And don't lose the washer like I just did. That's the washer I just dropped. See how dirty it is? It's dirty grease from last time when I did all this. So I'm going to clean it all off, clean off the surface, clean off this, and this completely comes apart. So that's the washer from the outside. Here's the bolt that goes through. It just slides through this hole. And again, I'm just cleaning the bolt off to get any dirty grease that's on there already off so I don't put it back on with dirty grease. <clears throat> so I take my grease, marine grease, lubricate all the way on here. The larger washer has to go on first. So I got some more grease on my fingers. I'm lubricating this all up, putting that through there. 
this through here. Get a little bit more grease on my finger. There's the other washer. Spread a little on this surface. Put the washer on. Got my 12 millimeter socket, hand tightening it so that I don't strip anything. And I'm gonna take my wrench, I'm gonna tighten this on, but don't go crazy. I'm just trying to snug this. There it goes. See how this can go back and forth? But everything else stays in place because the two washers on each side that are lubricated are sliding back and forth with this. And I just got it snugged just so it doesn't unscrew. Now there's a lever that you release for the tilt. They want us to lubricate that. But again, let's clean the entire area off. I'm just putting a light coat on each side and working it back and forth. This entire mechanism swivels back and forth. That's how you steer. And there's a grease fitting right here that lubricates that mechanism so that when you go back and forth, it's not dry metal going back and forth rubbing on itself. So we need a grease gun. I have my grease gun, but every time you use it, the tip of it has a little grease on it and it gets dirt on it. So as a good practice, I just squeeze a little bit out and wipe it off. That way I'm not pushing dirty grease into the fitting. And this is where you need to have paper towels. Push it on and hold it. Give it a little squeeze. You can start to see. Some grease coming out. And before it gets too far all over. It makes a mess. I'm going to clean it off before I add more. And that's where this container with the uh, plastic garbage bag in it is for. So anything I get that I want to throw out, I throw it in there. Now, this will go round and round and round and round. So I'm going to turn it completely around and then squirt a little bit more in. Again, I'm cleaning off all of the grease that's squirting out before it gets on everything else. All right, the motor is in the, still in the tilted up position. And the motor rubs back and forth when the boat is going forward on this spot and it rubs down here on this collar. So we need to lube the two locations down here and on the the shaft. This is what I use, Super Lube. It is a food grade lubricant and it's made for being around water and it's highly durable. So I just take a bunch of my finger, I put it on here around the inside of this collar. Now let's put the motor into the down position, do the release and push this as if it was under throttle like that. These are the bolts that hold the motor to the transom. So I'm loosening them up completely on both of them. All right, there they are, completely loose. I'm going to take paper towel and clean off the threads as best I can. There we go. And now I'm gonna put a little bit of the marine lube on the threads. 
and work it all the way around on both of them. All right, now, you won't be able to see this too well either. I'm gonna run these all the way in. Okay, now they're tight. They wipe off any extra grease that got pushed out from the threads being run in. And that one's done. On the side of this casing, there's a screw here. It puts pressure on the shaft so that this can't turn as easily. So that while you're driving, you can adjust how much tension you want on this. So if you unscrew it, they want us to lubricate this. So be careful when you take this off. There's a spring around it. You don't want to lose the spring. Take that off and then there's just threads and I clean them off and then I clean the spring as best I can and I clean the surface where this came from. Now this thing kind of makes me a little nervous and I'll explain why. Just a little bit of lube on the threads here. I don't like the idea that this thing comes all the way out and I'm going to put a little bit on the end. I'll put the spring back over what I don't like is that this could easily vibrate loose while you're running down the lake. This could fall out and you could lose it. I don't like it to be in here very, very tight. I don't have it really snug on there where it might hold itself in place. Like there is snug, but then it's hard to turn this thing at all. So I kind of have it a little bit loose. You kind of have to put it where you want it. That's what they want you to do, so I do lubricate this. And if it falls out, I guess I'll just have to go get another one. We never put the two screws, nuts, back on the fuel tank. So let's put those on before we forget. I've got this out of the way. There are just two here and two washers. And if you remember, we put them in the tray so that we wouldn't lose them, which I found to be valuable keeps me from losing things. Okay, run them down. So I'm just gonna snug them, both of them. Okay, snug, snug. Now right here is the engine oil, and this is where you put it in. There's a plug here. Whenever I take that off, I clean it to make sure that I don't when putting it back in, get any dirt on that spot. And I also take a, a paper towel like this and wipe around that, but be careful not to knock things into the hole. Now to change the oil, we're supposed to pull this plug. And when you do, <laughs> the oil runs all over everything. I'm gonna try something a little bit different, at least this time, see how it works. I have this unbolted from the transom, so the thing is completely loose. This weighs about 30 pounds, so I should be able to Turn this thing upside down fairly easily. I don't know if I have the camera where you can see this. Well, that was the first time I ever did that. I got most of it in there, but I spilled some on the floor so, paper towel as we go. And I got it all over the outside of the bag, so I'm just pulling it up like this. How much of a mess did I get over here on the motor? Truth is, not much. I don't know if that was a good idea or a bad idea, but I certainly got it all out. I guess this was a success. I really, I had just a little oil here. Some apparently got on this somehow and just stripped, but last time I had oil all over everything here every time I've done that by taking out that screw so and if you want the truth I didn't think of that on my own one of my subscribers happened to tell me to do that so and I can't remember who told me that but whoever did thank you it saved me a heck of a mess And I'm sure I got all the oil out. So that worked. I got everything wiped down. Let's try to put some oil back in. Very difficult to see through that port with the camera. According to the manual, this crankcase holds a quarter of a quart, 0.26 quarts. I like this, uh, this thing that I have. I can tip it over, get it in there, and it doesn't come out until I go like that.
and you can turn it back off again if you had a full container and you didn't use it all. Okay, we just got to get the cap back in here and get it snug. Okay, the oil's changed. Let's see what's next. Okay, we're going to change the lower unit gear oil. We do that by unscrewing those two screws off the motor. Okay, so I used the impact wrench to get them a little bit loose. Okay, there's the bottom screw. You can see it's starting to come out. And I almost always take the bottom screw out first. Just don't drop them. And there it goes. Now, if you notice, the lube looks like it has no water in it. That means that my seals are in good shape, which is real good to me. One of the biggest failures of lower end units on boats is that they wind up getting water inside the lube. Now, the two screws this is the top one, that's the bottom one. The bottom one has a little washer on it and the top one did not. So just make sure that you don't get those mixed up. And we're gonna let that drip a little bit. So what do you need handy? Once you get done with it dripping, which it looks like it's most of the way, I'm gonna fill it from the bottom up. When it get, starts coming out the top, then I'm gonna put in the top screw. So I wanna have the top screw kind of handy. And my hands are gonna be pretty much tied up to squirt this in. You can use a little pump mechanism that goes on these. I actually have one, but the one I have does not have the size threads here for this one. So you got to make sure that your bottle is fairly full because you're going to have to squeeze this. All right, got it in. There we go. Now try to squeeze it and get, see there's air still coming out. There you go, solid. I think I got pretty much solid in there. So I'm going to put the top screw in. And once I get the top screw in, then I can put the bottom in. But see how it doesn't leak out right away. I'm sure if I left it like that, it would leak. The key is to get it started. Because this stuff is really slippery. And once you get it on your fingers, it's hard to get it, get it going. So okay. Just getting it as snug as I can. And we're done with that. We're gonna pull this um, propeller off. But I wanna do something first, and I'll show you why. This propeller is plastic. So when it's running through, and I run through some heavy things, it gets kinda of chewed up on the edge and puts a pretty rough edge on it. So I've got a file here and I'm going to file just down the edge just to make it smooth again. Now this is a pretty fine file. It's not real rough so I can work on this without taking an awful lot of material off which is what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to get it back to pretty close to where it was originally. All right, well, that's not too bad. And now I'm straightening out the cotter pin. Now this is the size, I hope that'll focus, of the old cotter pin. You can either straighten this out kind of and put it back in, but if you're gonna put one in that's new, make sure that you get a stainless steel one. Now I don't go in salt water much, but 
if you're going in salt water and it's steel and not stainless steel, it'll rust. And that just slides right off. And then there's a pin here. Take that off. And then there's always, and luckily, that's just grass. The bad part would be to find fishing line in here. Because what happens is it's in here and it's rubbing against the seal and it eventually can tear the seal up to the point where water starts to go inside here and then your lower gear unit is full of water and not necessarily just lube and then things wear out and break and all kinds of bad things. But in our case, that didn't happen. So it looks good, the shaft looks good, the seal looks good. Get another cotter pin. Even the uh, propeller looks good. It's not wallowed out or anything like that. I like it. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is put the pin in. What I do is rotate this so that it's horizontal, the, the slot. Because if you turn it the other way, it just falls out. That's what I'm trying to not do. And it's, there's the slot, so I want it to go on like that, but you can feel for it like that. Put the cotter pin in. Make sure it's all the way in. And then take a pair of pliers. One side is always longer than the other, so I bend over the longer one first so I can get a hold of it. Then bend over the short side. And get them bent over pretty well. And I'm trying to get them fairly flat so that they're not catching on the weeds as they spin. There we go. Fold it over. It's on tight. New lube in here. All right, the spark plug is right under here. There, it's right here. And it has the new plug that I have, it's right here, sitting in a 5 8 inch socket. Has to be between 24 hundredths and uh, 28 hundred. So here's both a 24 hundred and a 28 hundred. They tell you to use a wire feeler gauge. I have one someplace. <laughs> I can't find it. I've looked, but I don't really like the wire ones. They bend too easily. I kind of like these, the wheel kind. Uh, you put it in where it obviously fits. Slowly turn it till you get some feedback. And right now, it's around 26. So let's put it in the 24 to get an idea how accurate that is. Got it in the 24, got it in, but it will slide back and forth. Here's the 28, it won't even go in. So I know it's somewhere between 24 and 28, and I'd say it's closer to the 24 than the 28 because the 28 won't even fit in. So. I'm gonna stay with this, but that's how I got there. So let's get the old one out. Sometimes I look to make sure there's no <laughs> debris in there because I don't want it going in the spark plug hole once it's opened. It's not all the way out, but some debris might be on the outside of there. <laughs> and so I'm getting it out, especially in this case, this is probably fairly far in there I'll put my finger over the hole and then I'll rub around to make sure nothing falls in. Rub it on my shirt, my wife will get mad. Let's see what the old one was. Now, you can tell a lot about a spark plug, by the way, how it's burning. It's burning fairly white with a little brown around there. There's no real crustaceans <laughs> growing on it, if you will. Here's the 24 and that fits in there pretty well. It slides back and forth, but pretty much similar to, to the one that I just set. And here's the 28. 28 won't even fit in there. So this one was already very much in the range where it was supposed to be. Let's put the new one in. I'm not bumping on anything on the way in so we don't change the, the gap. All right, I got it in finger tight and it's going in with no problem. So I know I'm not cross threaded. Now a brand new spark plug has a crush washer around it. Now, once I get it to the point where right there, it's pretty firm. They tell you to go another half a turn. On a plug that you take out and put back in, you only go a quarter turn. All right, that's about almost a half. I can feel it's 
pretty tight. I don't want to get any tighter than that. Spark plug, the boot. I wiggle it a little to make sure it's seated all the way in. The motor is done. Let's do the trailer. Okay, if you haven't seen my previous videos, you'd know that, uh, well, if you had, you'd know that I replaced lights on the trailer with LEDs. So they run much less in temperature. Uh, they're waterproof, they're sealed. So I don't have to worry about dropping this into a wet environment and frying the bulbs. So I know my lights are working. I just had it out yesterday. Let's look at a couple other things. These are bearing buddies in the middle of the hub there. And before I do this, I always have paper towels. I pull off, this is called a bearing buddy bra. Get it to the edge and then get your paper towels here and pull it off the rest of the way because sometimes you're gonna have some water that comes with it. Now, I recently uh, lubricated these. As you can see, it's pushed some grease out from the last time I did it. And you can see the grease all the way around. So I'm gonna wipe this all off, see? Completely. Now, not all bearing buddies have this. I paid extra for these. See this blue ring? This sticks out when it's under full pressure. So if you had just filled it with grease, it would stick out even more. And I'm gonna remove all this bad grease that's in here that got pushed out. And that's the idea of the paper towels because it's, as you can see, it's messy. And that's the idea of my bucket over here to throw oily, greasy things in and I'm cleaning this completely. It also tells me the next time I take this off if grease has come back out and pushed out of here because it's empty and this is clean. What are we going to do now? Well, I'm going to put some more grease in here to make this, gr this blue ring stand out just a little. Now, when it's low, it's way uh, lower than that. You can't even see the blue ring. Uh, so obviously I still have grease there, but greased this not that long ago. Uh, and obviously since then it's kind of gone down a little. So I'm going to do it again, but this is an easy thing to do and you want to pay attention to this because being broken down on the side of the road, blowing out a bearing like that is not the easiest thing to fix. Remember this other grease gun that I have? That's what I have it for. The tip is clean. I put this in and then I squeeze it. I don't know if you can see it. See the blue ring coming out? There we go. It's full. I clean the tip off because I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm not going to bother showing you that. No sense in wasting your time. You should be either doing this to your own or out fishing one or the other. Or out buying tackle. There's nothing that says winter can stop you from buying tackle. Unless you live in Florida. My driveway has a little slope to it. The vehicle is down the hill. The trailer, at least the wheels, are still inside the garage. So if I unhook this, it's gonna roll down the driveway. I'm gonna do this later when I get it up on level ground uh, in just a couple of minutes when I'm putting it away. But I wanted to show you this. This is called Reese, R-E-E-S-E, -E -E, Teflon Hitch Ball Lube. And you take the trailer off the ball. You take some of this, it's cream colored, smear it around your finger, smear it on the inside, smear it around the ball, and then the ball with that stuff on it kind of makes it susceptible to any kind of dirt sticking to it because it's now kind of gooey. Well, I always keep a trailer ball covered with a trailer bra. That's what this is. So once I take that off of there and park the trailer, 
this gets stuck over the ball. The ball is now covered, keeps it from getting dirt or anything else on it. And the next time I go fishing, I grab a hold of this, pull it off and put the trailer back on and it works great. This is pretty inexpensive stuff. I don't remember how much it cost, but it was, it's worth not being broken down on the side of the road with something that you can't fix because the coupling's worn out or the ball is worn out and now the, it just doesn't fit right anymore. It's something else I do to the trailer for maintenance. Air pressure in the tires. This is supposed to have 60 pounds max Right now it's got 43.7, so I generally bring it up to 50. There we go. 50, I pull it off, I put the cap back on. I'll do the same thing to the other side. However, you need to know that you should have a trailer spare tire. And it should be checked once in a while. It's the exact same size tire and all the rest. And it's got 43.5. Now it's got 50 pounds in it. If you don't have one of these, find it at a garage sale, wherever you get it from. But this fits. See how it doesn't fit that one? It does fit that one. So this allows you to get this, the nuts off of this if you had a flat tire. And then you could put on your spare or you just blew up the tire, whatever you did. Without this, you're just guessing that the same size nuts fits the vehicle that you're towing this with. That isn't always the case. They're not very expensive. As you can see, this one's, this one's old. Used to be my dad's. I bought one for my son, so he has a shining new one, but I keep this old one for me. Check your tires once in a while. They also need attention. There is one other thing. I showed you this. It's called a no spill gas can now this is a one and a quarter gallon that's the size that i buy for fuel for the 2.3 honda it will last a long time a gallon will last me almost a season but this is how i put it in now how do i fill this gas tank how do i fill these gas cans well i'll show you this one first what's one advantage of this can over the other ones. The other ones, you got to guess when it's full, you got to get it off of there and <laughs> it's not always good. And you pour gas all over the place. This thing does not allow gas to come out unless you push that little green button right there. Once it gets full up to the spout, it stops. Now this gas can, this gas tank inside this Honda is full. But if I push that down, that's as full as it goes. It doesn't let any more gas in. I release it. And I look inside and it's like this far from the top. It's perfect. These cans, I was out yesterday, I used an entire tank full of this. And I use partially this. So this is like here. Does the same thing. It just filled up. It's about at this level. I put the top on, make sure it's tight, and it's ready to go. That's how I fill these back up. After I get done fishing, I fill this, I fill my bottles, and then off I go. See these bottles? I have two of them. See, it says number two, one and two, so I can kind of keep track of it. I keep one standing here and one is standing on the other side. If I don't do something to these once in a while, it will be really difficult to get this top off. So what do I do? Let me set that there, because this is full. This is called 3M silicone P. 
paste. This is expensive. It's about 25 bucks for a can of this. But I get just a little bit on the end of this little thing like that. I put it in the edge and roll it around. There's an O-ring there. And that's what I'm trying to lube. And then I take a rag and I get off the excess and I put it back on and I make sure that I don't have any around here. I don't really want it in the fuel. Put it on, I tighten it and then I take it off. And boy, it comes off easy. When you're in the boat and you're out of fuel and you're on the other side of the lake and you're trying to get this open, it's not easy. The very first time that I realized I needed to do this, I hadn't lubricated it at all, and I was on the other side of the lake, a couple of miles away, and I really had all I could do to get this open, because you have to push it down and turn it at the same time. But I got it open, and I started to use this ever since then. So then, I put it there, this tank was already full. This one's full, that one's full. I can run for three solid hours full blast on this motor with the amount of fuel that I carry plus what's in here. This is the container I was throwing all my trash in earlier. All my grease from the wheel bearings is here. All of the lower unit lube is in there. The engine oil is in there, paper towels, everything. All I have to do now is fold the bag over backwards, tie it, throw it in the garbage, and I'm done. No cleanup. Okay, we've done a lot of maintenance. The motor's ready to go for another year at least. The trailer's ready to go, but occasionally I check those bearings. But everything's good and ready to go. And I've hopefully given you some information about how you can do this and make it work for you. I appreciate you watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you haven't pushed the bell, please do that. If you got any comments, feel free to leave them. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your supporting my channel. Bye now.